Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. In this third part, we'll take a look at the various apps I use every day for my day job as a product owner running Linux. My job requires me to write a bunch of specifications, edit or create mockups, stay in touch with most members of the team, and write and edit documents of various sorts. Let's see what I use to make all of this work. Communication. These are the basics. I use the default Elementor US Mail and Calendar apps. While they have their limitations, they are still pretty handy in a pinch, and since I don't send all that much email, and most of our meetings are informal, my needs are well covered. If I had to integrate into a more rigid company, I'd probably switch to Evolution or Thunderbird, if only to better integrate with a contacts directory and have an all-in-one solution as much as possible. We also tend to use Slack a lot. I used to use the app, but Electron is just too heavy, and having the application running as a pinned browser tab with notifications turned on is just more efficient for me. We also use Asana to manage the roadmap and the state of various projects and tasks, and this runs perfectly in the browser, so it's another pinned tab. Finally, to handle communication with the dev team, we use GitLab with multiple boards. This is also handled through Firefox without any issues whatsoever. Working with files. Easy one here, LibreOffice. It's a great office suite, it's fast, it's flexible, it handles Microsoft document formats pretty well, and looks good on Elementary OS once I switch to a tab interface. I mostly work on the word processor and the spreadsheet since I rarely have to give presentation. LibreOffice does has its quirk, especially for someone used to Excel, and I sometimes have to search for a specific option that's not in the place where I usually look, but that's more making a new habit than an issue with the software itself. I use the LibreOffice Flatpak to stay as up to date as possible since Elementary OS comes with the older 6.0 version, but your mileage may vary depending on the distro you're using. For mockups, I tend to use GIMP, or more recently Glimpse, just because its icon is nicer, if I'm honest. I'm used to it since I mainly work from screenshots that I then transform and tweak, it does a pretty good job. All my files are synced through pCloud, just in case. It's a fantastic cloud syncing solution, pretty inexpensive and reliable, and it lets you sync folder to folder on as many devices as you want, which means you don't have to store your files in a single folder for them to be synced. I use it for all my personal needs as well, syncing photos from my phone, personal stuff, video game saves, and even store all my video projects in there, since I have 2TB of data for less than 10 euros a month. Other productivity apps. Now obviously, I also use Firefox all the time, and Chromium just a little bit less. I prefer Firefox, since I really like what the company is doing for the web in general, and I don't want to give Google more power than it already has, so staying clear of their browsing engine is a priority for me. Still, since our web app is used by real people who, you know, use Chrome, I also test our web app on Chromium. The browser is an important tool for my job, if only because all of our documentation is written in Confluence, which is a web-based application, but also because we work on a web app. Now, I recently started using a password manager as well, and I chose Dashlane, which incidentally is also the sponsor of this video. I use a ton of web services at work and in my personal life, and I basically spend my time trying to remember passwords and logins. I used to rely on Firefox's integrated password manager, but on some websites, it just can't seem to remember my login info or my password, and syncing between devices is spotty, notably between my computer and my phone. Dashlane fixed all that, but it actually does a lot more. It can also store your credit card information, and lets you use it in one click, which is super useful. I'm always reluctant to save a credit card on various websites, so having Dashlane remember it instead, and being able to fill everything in in one click, is a lot more secure and convenient. It works by creating a master password that you use to unlock the information linked to the site you're browsing. This means you can create very complex passwords and not care about remembering them. Dashlane even helps you generate passwords for maximum security, and on top of that, it will let you know if one of the accounts you've saved is getting hacked. Dashlane is free if you use it on one device, and you can get a 30-day free trial for the premium subscription, which is the one I use, by clicking the link in the description of the video. Another app I use very often is NotesUp. It's a markdown note-taking application that's designed for elementary OS, but I'm pretty sure now that you can find it somewhere else. It has nothing really special, but since it looks so nice on elementary, I stuck with it. Its note database is synced through pCloud to my main desktop at home, so I always have everything where I need it. It allows you to select three different color schemes and even edit the CSS for viewing markdown. It works with notebooks, in which you create individual pages, and handles an edit and a view mode separately. For people allergic to markdown syntax, it has a rich editor with a toolbar and also supports tags. I use it all the time, in meetings when working on specific projects to hash out the big picture and list various questions I have, or for the channel to write the video scripts. 
ULauncher is another one I came to use to quickly find files. It's a quick launch tool. Just hit Ctrl plus space and start typing. It can use accelerators to filter specific stuff. For example, when I type GT budget, it's going to use GNOME Tracker to find files named budget and offer me a bunch of options to deal with that file. It's super handy and I came to use it more and more at work. Another very simple tool I use is Color Picker, a basic color picking utility available in the App Center. It keeps a history of the colors you've selected and allows you to quickly copy and paste them in various formats, like RGB, hexadecimal. I use it all the time when I'm prototyping and it's really handy. I also use Optimizer, a nice looking system monitor for elementary OS. I just use it to monitor processes, CPU, RAM and disk usage and check if running our web app is getting too intensive on a specific browser. Any other system monitor would do, but this one looks nice on elementary OS and does what I need from it. Now, less used apps include Drawing, a paint-like program for quick annotations on screenshots, Screen Recorder for quick video screen grabs to illustrate a specific bug or issue, and PDF Tricks for when I need to merge or split PDF documents. Less work-focused apps. Hey, don't judge me, I also like to relax at work from time to time. For that, I use Vocal to listen to some podcasts where I write specifications or test a specific feature. It's a great podcast application, which uses the iTunes podcast library, so almost everything is in there. Apart from Linux-focused podcasts, I also enjoy Lore, which is really soothing and intriguing. I used to listen to The Minimalists and The Memory Palace as well, but I just couldn't catch up with everything, so I had to cut some of them out. When a talking voice is not what I need, I also use Bytes, a minimal music player, and listen to web radios. One of my favorites is Phoenix, a free radio based in Caen in France, which my ex-wife made me discover when we first met, and which really matches my taste these days. Byte is a simple app that can also play your local music if you still have any, and it's been working very well for my simple needs. It also integrates very nicely with elementary OS, although it's also available on Flathub if you're using another distro. To finish, I also enjoy using Fondo to discover great wallpapers. It uses the Unsplash catalog and allows you to change wallpapers with one click, and these will stay in your wallpaper options afterwards. Steam is also installed to play a quick game of Stellaris or Crusader Kings 2 during my lunch break. And that's about all I use to complete my day job. I realized writing this that I depend on a lot of web apps to handle crucial day-to-day -day tasks, but that's the case for a lot of jobs out there, and I don't think my case is too far off from the average Joe using a computer for work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!